mask. I just thought, I thought I'd use, I thought I'd talk pussycat. How am I supposed to talk with this thing over me face? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd join, I thought I'd wear a nice new shower cap mask. God, I can't breathe. How do these lunatics breathe? I can't breathe, I'm going to asphyxiate. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to asphyxiate. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus, I can't, I, I can't wear that. Hey guys, welcome to the awakening. God, I haven't done an awakening for a while. Um, I've um, received an eviction notice, as you know, most of you, <laughs> on Friday, um, as I've been on Facebook on and off telling you. Um, not even a week since I received the eviction notice um, to leave um, by the 14th of November. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Again, around Christmas, because whenever they evict you, it's always just before Christmas, as we know. So went into huge panic, huge terror. I didn't know what to do with myself, <laughs> as usual. Um, I'm living on my own, separated from my husband. And um, when he told me, I just flew off the handle, went crazy. Um, didn't know what to do. Anyway, over the last couple of days, done a lot of meditation. I've been staying in the now with the elastic band as much as I can, but the story kept coming back. Where are you going to live? What are you going to do? Who's going to take the cats? And it went on and on and on, as you know, some of you. And then at some point I thought there was little things coming towards me, but the ego wouldn't even look at it. It still won't look at it. Um, everything but bit by bit it is i started a petition on change.org and i thought to myself this is the time now to change the law for all of us and i want to have some clauses in this law i want to have some clauses for all of you anyone who's who's renting any tenants i mean you pay such a fortune forgive me a sec i'm just going to have some soup i made my own soup it's from my beetroots that I grow in the garden. Beetroots. Brussels. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Wonderful. You can't beat your own beetroots. Oh, you can't beat your own beetroots. That's funny, isn't it? Mm. Where was I? Yeah. So, um, I want to set out some clauses here. Um, I can't feel good with them. See the mine? Clauses, claws, cats. Whoop! It's gone. Things the elastic band come back. Mm. Okay. Some clauses that I want to outline here on Moving on TV and also on the petition. One at a time to protect tenants from now on. You have a right to be protected. We have a right to be protected. Mm -hmm. This is an awakening. This is a new time. These are my suggestions. Okay. These are my suggestions. Number one. I'd say the most important thing in the whole of this. Okay, so if we put them in a different order, guys, because I've been talking to you about this. Number one, when you sign a tenancy agreement, you have protection, not two months or three months, but at least six months. There is no way that you can put a human being under the pressure to get out in two months, particularly if they've got a family, no. That to me should be the number one clause. You change the tenancy agreement and I will ask one of one estate agent, one estate agent to work with me. It could be the one I'm with at the moment, Tim Russ, because they are kind, I must admit, there is kindness in them. And get to know your landlord. 
See, I know my landlord. We are working together. Okay, so it's about awareness as well. But clause number one, meet your landlord, make them a real person. And together with them and the estate agent, you create a clause, a human right clause that you are not given two months to get out. You are given at least six months. Okay. I'm going to be very tough here and I'm going to say that landlords should not be allowed to rent properties to human beings anymore if they will not abide by these terms. From now on, the tables are turned. In order to create more balance, tenants need rights, okay? So clause number one is you cannot be evicted with less than six months, six months, because it takes a long time to find a suitable accommodation for you and your family. Not only that, children have to be moved from one school to another. This is out of order. Six months is the minimum. And if you have a child and you've got to move them from school, you've got the estate agent and the landlord have to help you find accommodation, suitable accommodation near where your child goes to school. Clause number one with little codices. Clause number two. If you have a pet, if the landlords are not agreeable for you to rent with a pet, then they get struck off because your pets are your babies. If you haven't had children like me, which I hope to have when the med beds come along, because I'll be 20, 30 years younger, who cares? I'll be able to have a child, please God. Anyway, let's not go there. We're talking about this now. If you have a pet, no one can force you to give your animal away. Again, you sit down with the landlord and the estate agent, and you decide together how to protect the property. I have two cats. They never scratch anything. They never break anything. Animals are very well behaved if you teach them how to behave. Your animals are your family. So clause number two, you, if you will not accept animals, children need animals to help them grow, to help them develop. What's the harm in them having a little guinea pig or a rabbit? or an aquarium, for God's sake, cats are so well behaved and so are dogs. It's up to you to bring your animal up, so to speak, to be a respectful animal. And you can get references from the other properties of how these animals behave. So work with your landlord, work with your estate agent. I am asking for tenants' rights. Okay, that's clause number two, your pet. And this will go on the petition. Clause number three, never be allowed to evict anyone around the Christmas holiday. Never ever do that again. And never evict people in the winter because where if they are homeless, you're going to destroy their lives. If they're vulnerable, they might get sick. They're more likely to get sick in the winter. Look, if you evict people in the summer or in the spring, you give an eviction. I don't want it to be called an eviction anymore. I want that gone. What I'd like you to do is have a meeting, a meeting with your tenant, like a human being. You sit down, you have a cup of tea, and you say, I need you to vacate the property because I am selling. That's what I did with the landlord that I have. He's a nervous wreck. He's stressed out. He can't be a landlord anymore. We sat down and we discussed this and he gave me till January now. You sit down and you talk. 
you work together. It's part of their responsibility as human beings. You pay the estate agent, you pay the landlord more than people pay for mortgages. It's their responsibility and yours to work together. Never evict a human in the winter, please. If you evict them in spring, they've got time to get out in the summer. Every, the sun is shining. If they're young, they can stay in the tents. Think about it. They can go to a beach somewhere if they're young. If they're not as young, even if they're not as young, people can live in a tent if they have to. But don't let people deal with this on their own, all right? These are the clauses. Clause number three. Clause number four. If you are going to be selling your property, like the landlord I live with, I, I don't live with, whose home this is, you offer your tenant a buy to buy. You offer your tenant an opportunity to buy, like a shared ownership with you, a housing association, the council. You get a loan from the government, whatever but you get the opportunity to buy this property, whether it's a quarter of this property, a half, because you're paying more in rent. So if you're paying it already in rent, you should be allowed to buy this property, all right? Clause number five, is that when you get housing benefits for private accommodation, because if you're in council, they can't evict you just like that. It's a lot more complicated. And usually they don't evict you. From my experience, I've seen people that have destroyed houses from inside out and they still didn't get evicted because they were vulnerable. But what I'm saying to you, if you are renting privately, and the landlord, uh, sorry, and you go to get um, universal credit or you go to get housing benefits. Instead of giving you all that money to give to the landlord, the council helps you to buy, sorry, the housing, the housing benefits or universal credit help you to buy the property. Because you have a right to be safe if that's what you want, obviously. Anyway, those are five clauses, <laughs> five clauses that I am going to put on the petition and I'm going to put on Facebook one at a time and send it around everywhere. If you are a tenant, I want to see you treated with respect and dignity. If a landlord doesn't abide by these rules, they will be cut off from renting. There has to be a code of conduct. I know a landlord who tried to evict innocent people during COVID. Innocent people that are paying him 900 pounds a month, maybe more. Innocent people. And there has to be a cap on the amount of money that landlords can charge you. Rent has to come down. Either it comes down or you're offered an insurance policy to protect you from the money that you pay. You cannot keep paying out. The husband was paying out his whole salary nearly on a one bedroom. And then they can let you go. Even if you sign a tenancy agreement for a whole year, they can let you go in two to three months. No, not on my watch. The petition is up. I was, everybody, my heart is going out to you. If you have children, the stress this is going to put on you is unbelievable, considering we are going through hell as they do what they do, which I can't say on here because I'll probably get cut off. Um, but you know what's going on if you're awake. You cannot be evicted 
if I choose to go, I will choose to go because I've gone somewhere better <laughs> and my animals are loved and wanted and it's where I want to go, not where they want to put me, okay? And beyond the ego, I'm talking. So the ego has to go as well. <laughs> but if I decided that I wanted to buy this property where I'm going to get 200,000 pounds from for a one bedroom, yes, 200,000 pounds for a one bedroom house with a garage. 200,000 pounds, guys, that cannot be allowed. And hopefully, property will drop and drop and drop soon. And they will not be able to charge you that kind of money. But if I went for a quarter of this property, that's what, 50,000? So no one could ever evict me again. The government gives the landlord 200,000. I give him whatever I can raise and a small mortgage and I stay. And never can I be evicted again, do you understand? There have got to, I'm giving you options here, options. The same way as you have options about staying well, you do have options. Because I love you and because I'm here to do a job and I've had my massive breakdowns and I've had a lot of love, very, very lucky. And a landlord with a heart who's actually having a massive nervous breakdown. <laughs> I was teaching him the power of now. I was teaching the landlord the power of now. Can you believe it? I've got to drink some more of my soup, guys. It's so funny. I was teaching my landlord the power of now. In order for him to stay calm because he doesn't want to be a landlord anymore. Too much stress. So I cannot fight someone who's going through depression and stress. So I cannot fight the landlord. Ah! <laughs> I have to come up with a better solution for everyone because he's a human being and I'm a human being. I would be going against my nature if I tried to fight someone that was depressed and, and anxious and scared who just wants the property gone. So those are options. Obviously, if you're over a certain age, and we won't go into that, you can be offered um, housing. I expect um, there is a register you can register on, and I won't. I don't want to talk about that at the moment. Okay, but that is one of your options. If you're disabled, if you have a mental health issue, if you have children, you will probably get emergency housing. And from what I know, Red Kite um, gave me a grant, remember? They're not as bad as Paradigm. I wouldn't go near Paradigm with, um, if you put, you know, with a barge pole, but that's my opinion from what I saw. Now, Red Kite, on the other hand, there's a heart. There's a bit of a heart. And I have, they gave me a grant, remember, for encounters. So, Anyway, I'm going to put this in a clause, clauses for the awakening. So this is the awakening. The awakening is everything is happening that you uh, asked in order to clear. Everything is in your face. The marriage, <laughs> you separation, two months now, more than two months on my own, no friends, it's me and the cats. Um, yes, we are friends, we're getting on very well. Um, I'm not abandoned, <laughs> but I am doing this on my own. No one's living with me. And I made that decision to try and be single. You see how I feel. And so is he. And so far, so good. So everything in your face, yeah? The awakening. The awakening is all about going in here. And God knows, maybe that's why I feel like that this today because I got so much tough love yesterday from someone. I am so grateful. Uh, of course I'm on. So much tough love to go inside and just to be, not to do. And I did. 
And I called the Samaritans because I needed to talk when I couldn't stop panicking. So you can call the Samaritans, just say to them, some of them can be funny and say to you, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, but some of them can be very kind. And the one I got, her name was Hannah, and she was very kind. And she just listened and I cried and I told her about everything. And then today, and then I went into meditation and I meditated quite a lot. I don't think I went to bed till about 5 a.m. I was continuously meditating. And then I meditated when I fell asleep and I meditated when I woke up. Just being in the moment, the fears are coming up all the time. I can feel it, the body and the mind, the body and the mind. The fear is coming up all the time. And because I'm an empath, I had an interesting situation today. If you're an empath, you're gonna pick up things all over the place. And I closed my eyes and I thought of someone who I miss. And I suddenly felt right down on the ground, so depressed. And I thought, oh my God, that person's low. And all I did was send them love. And I got out of the house. I went to the allotment and I spoke to Martin the, the husband I'm separated from, and we talked about options. We talked about options, which one of them is to try and buy the property. Another one is to move to Scotland or Wales. I'm not ready to do that. That's a huge step, huge. We all know property is very cheap there, but I don't think I can get into Scotland at the moment. Everyone's locked down, everyone's locked down. There are areas in the country you can't get into. And the problem is, you know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. I never expected to be teaching you this. Necessity is the mother of invention. So when you have pressure, necessity makes you have to do something. If someone said to you, your body is really ill, and if you don't rest and cut out toxins, you will die. Then you will start to heal your body. Boom, 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 boom. Necessity is the mother of invention. And so necessity to, because I've been evicted again, which happens every few years at Christmas because they want to sell the property, actually nothing to do with me and my behavior, nothing to do with him. My, the husband, nothing to do with that. Long conversation with the landlord. The landlord is having a nervous breakdown of his own because of this pandemic. And he doesn't want to be a landlord anymore. And so I taught him the power of now. And he, I said to him, can I buy the property? Option? I don't know. But there are options. There are always options. My father always used to say to me, there's a solution for everything, Lauren, except when you're six feet under. <laughs> that was his, his, the way he used to say it. He said, there's always a solution for everything. I'll tell you another thing. I had a miracle from all of this. My sister, who I haven't spoken to properly for four and a half years, except maybe once on her birthday, contacted me, found out I was going to be evicted and said, you will never be on the streets as far as me and the girls are concerned. Now, she lives in the Middle East and so there's no way I'm going back there, obviously, but it was very kind. It was like a miracle. It was. It was a miracle. <laughs> it was a miracle. Now, I know uh, some people don't like me. They hate me. Maybe even I can feel it sometimes pure hatred from people. And if they're sitting there with a voodoo doll, which I thought the sister was doing, sticking needles in me, <laughs> sticking little needles in Lauren, well, guess what? It's backfired. And you, you may as well love me because I'm here for all of you. But I've made enemy in the life I've been on this planet for a long time, guys. 
and I've made enemies. Particularly some, I highlighted someone who was violent and a bully and I got cut off for an, a, seven, a, a whole day of Facebook. You know, I try to do my best and sometimes I make mistakes and people put me on pedestals and it's hard. I'm not perfect. I'm anything but perfect. But I've met people over the years, particularly a female friend of mine that she's a, a witch <laughs> she's a witch and sometimes i think she's sitting there <laughs> you know a doll and putting needles in saying oh that one that one <laughs> shall we go for that one because that's the big one the eviction lauren doesn't like things like that lauren can't stand losing her safety shall we just do that one because a lot, a lot, isn't it? A lot going on with me. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm cursed, but I mean, look what came out of it. I am not consenting to any of this. I am so protected and loved. Because to get a phone call from the, my sister, who I haven't heard from and, and has really told me she didn't want anything to do with me for years. To get a concerned phone call, are you okay? You will never be on the streets. I won't let you. Me and the girls have your back. Wow. Miracle. And a very strong friendship with the man I was married to for 27 years who we were separated. A lot of love, a lot of gentleness, compassion from you guys. But it's more important that it comes from in here because God, as I said, is in here, isn't it? I know, but you know, it's funny because someone thought I was looking for them to fix me. And this person said to me, Lauren, I'm not a billionaire. If I was, I'd give you the money. It's not about money. The rent has been paid. It's not about the rent. It's about being the stress of being a landlord. This man just cannot cope with being a landlord. And I felt sorry for him <laughs> because of what I am. So, yeah, <laughs> interesting situation, eh? So this, this man said to me, he was so kind, this, this other guy who gave me so much stuff about, he's a, he's, he's a teacher, an amazing spiritual teacher. I'm very lucky that this course turned up in America. Very, very cheap and very, very reasonable. And it's an ascension course. And uh, he said to me, Lauren, he said, if I was a billionaire, I would give you the money. I, and I thought, that is really kind of you, but that's not what I'm looking for. I just want to be peaceful. <laughs> for the first time in my life, all I want is peace. Not that stupid cat, I've already got him. Peace in my heart. Whatever. That's it. Peace. And uh, so he said to me, okay, he said, stop doing. Stop doing. He said, if you want peace, be, be. Oh my God, be. And you know, when I surrendered in the therapeutic community and I got 100% there in a peace in the therapeutic community, when the BPD left me, left me, and I don't believe in, labels as you know i don't believe in mental illness we're all shocked we're all shocked when i surrendered and i realized that the childhood abuse was not my fault it went out the window and i got 100 percent in the peace but my biggest fear is is the bag lady you know out on the street in the cold with the cats dying we're not there yet i don't think No. 
Properties do not belong to anyone. What is a house made of, guys? <laughs> it's made of stone. It's made of trees. It's made of, of elements, of energy, just like you and me. So how can it belong to anyone? Do you belong to anyone? Of course you can. You don't belong to anyone. You are a free, sovereign human. You do not belong to anyone. So how can a piece of land belong to anyone? It is given to us by God. By, it belongs to all of us. The collective God, nature, the beetroots that I'm eating come out of Mother Earth. They belong to you and me and everyone. Come and pick the spinach. It's overgrown. I don't know what to do with it. You can give me a donation. <laughs> you know, everything belongs to all of us. Everything. And so no one can buy a property, no one. No one can purchase a property. No one can be homeless. Read conversations with God. All you've got to do is take the cake. You know the cake? I'm just going to move the comments. You take the cake. The cake is all the money in the world. The cake, and you divide it between everyone. Maybe Nasara and Asara will be that. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So that's what I'm saying to you. Five clauses. I will do a proposal and I will get, I don't know if anyone is a lawyer here and wants to represent me. I cannot pay you, but I want to go out there and create these five clauses. And never, ever, Will human beings be treated like this by estate agents or landlords? There has to be a balance where the landlord is held accountable. And if they are not good people with hearts, they cannot rent anymore by human rights. What do you think, eh? Get back to me on movingontv1 at gmail.com. If your landlord is not happy to work with you, to help you to set to look at these clauses what's the harm of giving someone another few months until they find somewhere the problem with pressure is you can make the wrong decisions you can get yourself into a lot of mess you might move to a terrible place you get confused especially if you've got children or animals i want to take this pressure off of you God knows I don't want anybody to feel the way I feel. I don't want anyone to feel the way I feel. So if there's anything I can do for any of you, get back in touch with me, movingontv1 at gmail.com. There's a petition you can sign. Sign the petition on change.org. If you're afraid that Gil Bates or whatever his name is, owns it don't worry about that anymore i can't say that because i'll get cut off but all i'm saying to you is if there's anything i can do for any of you join with me help me create a map a new um what would we call it a constitution for tenants someone's got to do it and I'm going to do it. So I love you lots. Before I leave you, I'm going to do a reading for you. Quick reading. Of how to stay sane in a crazy world. <laughs> because I'm not going to predict anything. I just want to keep everyone calm and sane. And come to me with your issues. Moving on TV is there for you. Come to me with your issues. I need news flashes. I need the truth. I need more love, more positive stories. More than anything, join people power with love and compassion, no violence. 
Let's choose our how to stay sane in a crazy world. Please send this everywhere. <laughs> That's the card that I originated. How to just stay sane in the common one. Spirit, could you please give my lovely viewers a how to stay sane in a crazy world? How to stay sane in a crazy world, back to front. These cards can help you if you have a card, one card a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> one hug a day keeps the doctor away. Ooh, this one wants to come out. Drink more water. Once when I called the Samaritans and I felt low, he said, have you been drinking water? I said, no. He made me drink a whole bottle of water and that was it. Today, I will make sure I am drinking enough water and taking care of my body so I don't feel too low. Water is what we are made of. Well, 90% of our bodies. But as I said to you guys, drink more water. I'm gonna go now because I'm gonna edit this and get it on. Please sign the petition. I'll put the link to the petition in here and on there and on Miwi and everywhere. I will put the clauses one at a time as a proper constitution. I love you.